Um, you know, uh, well, if you guys are brand new here, no need give, just receive the word. Uh, if you guys are here from another church, then your gift is reserved for that church, that fellowship. But if you are here and you call New Hope your home church, then give with a cheerful heart because God blesses and he loves a cheerful giver. A couple of, uh, last month, my son and I, we, we had the opportunity to go to Japan. And um, I made a couple of observations there when I was in Japan. Number one, in Japan, get choked Japanese people over there. That place is loaded. I mean, we came out of the, the Yamanote train in Shinjuku Station, so we had to turn left to go to the escalator. And all you see is one million Chawang haircuts going up and down, up and down. That place was loaded, was loaded. But the other thing was really good was the food. The food was incredible over there. But anyways, my son and I, while there, we had the opportunity to go to New Hope, Tokyo. And it was really, really cool because not only on a Sunday in Japan, I was in a New Hope church, but it was also the inaugural Sunday of uh, what they called the Pacific Rim Bible Institute in Japan, that where they would send out, where they would train up youth leaders, new leaders, young people, and send them out into Asia. And that was so cool because in Japan, where there's over 140 million people, less than 1% of the population are Christian. Less than 1%. That's like everybody in this room, if we're in Japan, Maybe one, maybe two people would know Jesus. And as I was there, I was thinking of you guys, my brothers and sisters back here in Hilo. Because of your faithfulness and obedience and giving all these years, you're talking 30 years New Hope Hilo started, and 150 church plants later, God is still using your obedience and giving to proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth. So... Thank you very much. I wanted to tell you thank you for your faithfulness and giving. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much that you are such a good God that loves people all over the world. Right here in Hilo, we celebrate the many people who gave their hearts to the Lord last week. We thank you, Lord God, that oh, your faithfulness, Lord God, is so everlasting, Lord God. So, Lord, we lift up to you this service. We pray in Jesus' name that you would open the eyes of our heart, that we would understand by your Holy Spirit, Lord God, the word that would be given this morning. We thank you, we praise you, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jonathan Miyasato. You know, you would, you're one of them. They probably saw you and said, hey, he's one too. He get Japanese. I know, that was funny to hear him say that. Yeah. He get plenty Japanese people. <laughs> How well, ironic. Oh, this, Who yeah. Thought? And I think with, um, with us being able to give to the Lord, it allows us to continue to reach people for Him. That's why we're in this series. And the series is called Hunger and Thirst No More because we know that without God, we will continue in hunger for thirst for things of the world. But we've been learning that when we hunger and thirst for the things of God, we're able to be filled. So you can take out your notes with us and uh, we're going to get into that. But we wanted to give an example a little bit of yes, what Yes, we means. do. Because today actually your message is fresh is better. Fresh is better. How yes. do we know that fresh is better? Well, we know that fresh is better. We know. So, Except when it's like uh, stew. Like the ooh, next day stew. Yeah. This is a difference. But it's still fresh. That's you true. have to cook it and cook it fresh. So. I want to eat stew now. Thanks. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stew sounds okay. good. So day old stew is right. good. Yeah. So let's... let's test our theory yes. of fresh okay. is better okay. and may we have a volunteer come up yeah maybe bunny a volunteer why don't you find us a volunteer this is and this is safe okay <laughs> so those of you who are watching online this is very safe we are professionals at this so yes we, we are, are looking for a volunteer we are we promise it's going to be safe <laughs> people who are at church for the first everybody's time, like thinking, not making not eye know. contact with me right now everybody's like looking down hey guys hi can i, can I pick someone Hi, Zelia. Yeah, I was just going to say, just grab Zelia. Hi, Zelia. Zelia. <laughs> come, Zelia, come up. Come on, Zelia. She picked the person like this. Yeah, we normally don't just at our church just grab random people and tell them to come nice up. This is, this is just for today because we're going to try something. Don't you uh, wish you were yeah. here instead of watching online? <laughs> I bet you do. Yeah. 
Hi, Zelia. Good How morning, are you? Zelia. Can we welcome up Zelia? Yay. Yes, good morning, Zelia. Okay, so. Fresh is better is our test today. So, first of all, I need you to put on this blindfold. Yeah. It's a, it's you a, trust it's us, a, right? A We're a loving folk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. She has right. to say yes. Okay, so can we have our perfect, our wonderful yeah? Let's bring tray out tray. Come out, hungering and okay. thirsting. Speaking of hungering and thirsting, so we're gonna what we're gonna be doing is right on Thanks testing so our theory on fresh is better with some food and beverage. Okay, taste test. Taste test. Well, stale test, right? <laughs> fresh test. Okay, so <laughs> first we're gonna me. we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna give you two samples. Sample A. <laughs> As you notice, this has already been open. That should be helping. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. You. So this is already open. Okay, this one. Am I, okay, do I take this out? Yeah, you can. Okay, here you go. Okay, we can go ahead. Why am I nervous? I don't know. <laughs> because you're worried that we're gonna, we would have made you. Oh, that's, okay. that's a lot. Well, you don't, okay. yeah, you don't have to eat all just of it. One just one at a time. Can one. we tell her what it is? No, just, <laughs> just, you can, it's safe. It's safe. Okay. It's safe. Do you know what that is? <laughs> you don't have to eat like a bunny. <laughs> you can. How is okay, it? Okay, it's, it's, it's Fritos. Okay? You know it's Fritos. <laughs> What's wrong with it? It's cold and it stale. It's cold and stale. Cold and stale. Okay. Stale. Okay. We're going to try this one? Here. Yeah, yeah just. Yeah. That, nice. Okay, this one I am opening up and it is. Okay. <sighs> okay. I'm just going to put some. Okay. I'll just give you one okay. because then you don't touch all the other ones. You can have how's the bag too afterwards. Okay, so how's yeah. this sample B? Oh, there's a crunch to it. <laughs> is that one better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Now you got to wash it down though. So we're okay, going to okay. give you something to drink. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, is this, is this, okay. So this is a beverage. It's fizzy. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's funny. If you can't see Are it, you, you can't taste it. Do you always smell all your food before you eat it? I know somebody who does that too. Yeah. Okay, how is that one? No good? No. What's wrong with it? It's like, it's not bubbly. Oh, it's not, as not as fizzy. Yeah. Because fizzy is a word. I think it's a word. Okay, we're going to give you a fresh one because fresh is just so cheesily done well. Yes, fresh is better. Okay, let's try this. This one has uh, carbonation. So let's try this one. Okay. Good thing, yeah, we give you sugar in the morning. She still smelled it, although I told her what it was. Yeah. That was kind of a... <laughs> yeah. Much better. Okay, so according to this test, I guess you can take off the blindfold now, Zaylian. Okay. But according to this taste test, would you agree that fresh is better? Oh, definitely. <laughs> okay, can we give her a hand, <laughs> please? <laughs> and you can, you can keep that just for being such a good sport. Give her the chips to right. her. You can have okay. this. Yeah. In case you fall asleep during the message, you can snack. All but right. this is the only time you can eat food in the sanctuary is just during this time. So, yeah. So let's take out our notes. We're going to be talking about fresh is better because fresh is better. Let me ask you a question. McDonald's fries. Isn't it better when you just get it? That's why it never makes it home. When you go through the drive-thru and you buy McDonald's fries, you can't just leave it in the bag and then bring it home. You buy a fries on the, for on the way home, right? Because then it's, it's better that way. What about a hotel room that you first check into? Don't you, aren't you thankful that they changed out everything? That you're not going to walk into the restroom and say, hey, this towel must have been hanging here since the last person. Eh, I'm okay with it. <laughs> or, hey, the bed is messing. I'll just make the bed. No. You call room service and you say, can we change these things out? Why? Because fresh is better. You don't want something that's been there for a while. Even when it comes to our spiritual life, fresh is better. Did you know that God calls Jesus the bread of life? And the reason why he calls them that is because they had what was called the show bread in the presence of God. They would make fresh bread when they would worship God and they would put it on the table and it was called the show bread. 
It needed to be fresh, and they had to make it daily. Now, there's something about fresh bread that changes everything about bread. Like, you can go to the store and buy bread, and that's fine, and you, you eat bread, but have you ever made fresh bread? Like, while it's being made, you're salivating. You walk into the house, and you can smell the freshness of the bread being made. And then when you cut the bread, it just, like, flops open because it's so fresh. And then you put whatever topping you're going to put on it, like butter or I like, I like peanut butter and jelly. So when Heidi makes fresh bread, it's a big loaf. And instead of eating like four regular, you know, tiny little breads, you just make one thick one. And then you pack it with peanut butter and jelly. And when you hold it, it's like 10 pounds. And then you go to the doctor and then you got to take pills because we're eating like that. But something happens when it's fresh. Like something inside of us changes physically when we know something is fresh. Fresh fruit, fresh, uh, fresh out of the ocean when you catch fish. It's just something is different when it's fresh. And when God gives us His Spirit and gives us the opportunity to make every day new with Him, it's always better. Sometimes what we do is we carry on from day to day all the difficulties, the worries, the, the, the past things that have taken place. We carry that into the next day, therefore making the new day no longer fresh. But if we want to have better days, better life, better marriage, better family, then fresh will always be better. In our, in our app or in your notes, we're going to take a look at how we can bring in what is fresh and what happens when god brings in what is fresh this past week we had what was called unstoppable faith and if you were here with nick vujicic you could see how god was using a life like his to bring in god's spirit to those people who have never declared jesus as lord and savior over 300 people came forward to declare Jesus as Lord and Savior. So we want to congratulate all those who came forward. And if you're here, we want to welcome you to our church. But God was doing something fresh in their life. And for some of them, and you may have been like this when you first received Jesus, like you're just overwhelmed with emotion. You're overwhelmed with His Spirit, and so we start crying. And it's almost like God is doing a cleansing. Because when his spirit comes in, it's like he's saying, now I'm going to bring in a fresh spirit. And it's, it's like the crying, the emotion, cleans out all of the junk that we've accumulated up until the point we've said yes to Jesus. Because God understands that fresh is better. That fresh spirit, or we call it fresh revelation, that God reveals something to us. Because of that freshness, we have a brand new vision for our life, a brand new vision for our family or our marriage, and God is the one that does that. We, ha we have Thanksgiving this week. It gives us an opportunity to remember to be thankful for the things that God has done in our lives. As we often say, although Thanksgiving is one time a year, we should be thankful every single day for what God has done. Jesus himself said, I am the bread of life. And he calls himself the bread of life because he invites us to come to him and to partake of his life because fresh is better. And he wants us to come to him on a daily basis to be renewed, restored, and refreshed so that we can become more and more the person that he sees us to be. You see, God has a vision for every single life. But in order for us to live that life, we're going to have to choose between what the world offers and what God offers. The world offers us nothing of substance, nothing that sustains us, or anything that is fresh. But what Jesus offers us daily is his life every single day. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, this has been our scripture for this entire series. It reads this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I am looking forward to Thursday because I will be filled Thursday is that day that we look forward to because it almost gives us an excuse, right, to just eat as much as we can. Not as much as we want, it's as much as we can because we keep going until we almost are ready to pass out. And then after we eat, we pass out. We take a break, we rest for 20 minutes, and then we go back in for more. There's something about Thanksgiving. Now, Thanksgiving, 
when we prepare meals, it, it, it's like when family comes together, we all bring different things or we cook different things. And you're going to have your favorites. Like my favorite is this turkey with gravy, mashed potatoes, and stuffing. That's just, just, the, just the basics. Some of you go beyond and you do other things and you, 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 know, you have a full, uh, full spread of a meal. But I don't eat that much for dinner because I'm all about the dessert. The dessert is what I look forward to. And it's very simple, our dessert. It's just ice cream. Man, that's it. Just ice cream. Ice cream is fine. Or you can have ice cream with a scoop of ice cream. That goes well with ice cream. Or you can have ice cream a la mode, like an apple pie, or some of you make like a peach cobbler. But some of us look forward to dessert. Why? Because you're a, we call it a sweet tooth, like you like those things. But Thanksgiving wasn't always about the meal. Thanksgiving, when it was first brought up, or when we were first having Thanksgiving, it was all about the harvest, the autumn harvest. So they would give thanks because of the harvest. Now, Thanksgiving evolved through the years where it became a holiday and then it was no longer celebrated and then it came back in. And then in the early 20s, I believe it was the 20s, that's when the uh, Thanksgiving uh, was celebrated with the Macy's Day Parade. And when the Macy's Day Parade was first celebrated, they had maybe about, I think it was 200,000 200, people. 200,000 people. 250,000 people in New York, celebrating Thanksgiving with the Macy's Day Parade. Today, we have 3.5 million people lining the streets in New York for the Macy's Day Parade with over 10,000 participants and with over 50 million people watching live. This is, a, this is a parade. People fly to New York City for the Macy's Day Parade. And I thought, of all the holidays to be celebrated, we celebrate Thanksgiving with millions of people in that kind of way. That tells me that, that we are, at heart, grateful people. We are, I, I believe every single person has gratefulness inside. The question is, who are we grateful for and what are we grateful for? See, today is a reminder, or this week is a reminder, that we should be grateful that God gives us His Spirit fresh every single day. And because He does that every single day, it gives us an opportunity to bring that into our life, into our family, and into whatever situation we might be in. There are going to be times when your day is not going to be going well. And believe it or not, there are people who will not be celebrating Thanksgiving. There are people who are devastated during this season. And they may not celebrate Thanksgiving for whatever reason, but it is the holiday that reminds us to be thankful. That's why I love when Jesus likens himself to what we all love, which is food. When he said in John 6, 35, that I am the bread of life, he continued by saying, whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. It's like he's saying, do you know how you feel physically during Thanksgiving when you're satisfied? He said, that's how I'm going to make you feel spiritually with my spirit. You shall be filled. You're going to be satisfied. Now, what does he mean by this? You and I will be spiritually depleted just as we are physically without food, hungry or depleted from food. Both are going to cause like a starvation to be filled we starve when we don't have food intake. We starve spiritually when we don't have spiritual, a spiritual intake. So what Jesus does is he offers himself to satisfy our soul. And if we don't understand that, what we're going to, going to do is we're going to try to satisfy our soul with what we're lacking spiritually from the Lord. And we're going to look to other things to satisfy our soul, but Jesus says, no, 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 I am the bread of life. In other words, if you take of me, then that's where your life is going to find fulfillment. Not in doing these things, or oh, you can add these things later, but I should be the first one in because I'm the bread of life. You're going to feed from me, and I'm going to feed your spirit. You're going to be satisfied because fresh is better every day I can come into your life every single day. Sometimes I think we forget 
that when we receive the Lord of salvation, He's still our Lord, not just our Savior on the day we were saved. So if Jesus is Lord, every day He wants to come into our life. And sometimes we forget that He is always available to us every single day because He wants to bring in that fresh spirit. See, Jesus is saying that that physical satisfaction that you feel is what I want to do in your life. The other day, I was wrestling with so many things to accomplish, especially to follow up with the uh, unstoppable faith and sending out letters and emails and, and just to connect with people, those who uh, were here at the event who came forward. We were trying to figure those things out, also preparing for our Christmas season, and that's just ministry side of it, uh, the ministry side there's also home life you're, that you're trying to prepare for the season. So I had all of these things on my mind, and, and it's almost like you have this unsettled feeling, and you, you're, it's like your day is not clicking as how you want it to. And so I'm wrestling with these things, and I'm thinking, how do I, how do I, how, how do I bring in a different spirit? Because right now I'm wrestling with things. How, how, do, how do I change what I'm feeling right now? Because I don't feel like I'm having the best day. There's, there's so many things on my mind, so how, how do I do this? And so I felt my heart, my mind, my soul just racing. Finally, I said, simply, I said, Jesus, the importance of my relationship with you today far exceeds everything that is on my mind for tomorrow. So Lord, I just, I need your spirit to come in. I, I need my relationship with you to be strong. I, 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 right now, I know that if your spirit is in me, then all will be okay. So I just spoke with the Lord, talked with him, which is prayer. And then I put on some worship music, worshiped him. And then it's like all the heaviness was gone. That quickly, all the heaviness was gone. It's like God said, I have fresh bread for you, but you got to come to me. You can think all of these things through. You can try to plan well. You can strategize. You can, you can try to plan the season. But unless I'm involved in it, you're going to have this heaviness because you're doing this all on your own. But if you bring in my spirit, fresh is much better than what you're trying to do by yourself. Now, after I prayed, after I worshiped, were the problems still there? Absolutely. Did I still have to do some things? Absolutely. Absolutely. But now it was with a different strength. Yes, the, the so-called things that needed to be done were still there, but not my anxiousness. Everything changed because the Spirit of God came in. So here's, here's what takes place when we understand that we can come to Jesus at any time to receive fresh bread, that fresh vision for life, a fresh outpouring of His Spirit. And if you're taking notes, you can fill this in. Here's the first thing. Life in Jesus renews me. That's what happens. Our life in Jesus, it renews us. There, there is a renewal that takes place when we consistently come to Jesus. Why? Because simply put, fresh is better. Fresh is absolutely better. You know, while we're going crazy in our minds to live life and all the problems of life that seem to overpower us, we need to come to Jesus to be renewed. Otherwise, all of these things pile up, and then we don't know what to do with them. And so because of all the heaviness and the stress of the season or the, the Christmas season coming up, all of the stresses that come with it, traveling or family coming to join you or, or to visit or you're visiting someone, uh, your car breaks down, your, your finances are, are just uh, all confused, confusing to you right now. You, you don't know what is going where. You don't know what bill was been, has been paid. So you're trying to figure all of these things out. And so our head is stressed out. And so what we do is we take it out on someone else. We're short with people. We're mad at the dog for no odd reason. And they're just, they're just happy to see you. And you're mad at everyone because there's so much on your mind when Jesus can bring renewal. It's just coming to him. Have you ever noticed that when we're renewed, it's like everything around us changes. Wouldn't it be great if, if, if we could just renew our physical body? Like as we get older, we start thinking, I wish I had a new hip. 
I wish I had a new kidney. I wish I had a new just body. I wish everything was just new. I mean, we, we think in that kind of way, and so there are certain things that we can do. We'll get surgery. We'll get a, another knee, a hip, or something that can help us, right? We get better with that. But you, you, it takes time to get used to it. I'm finding this. The older I get, the more difficult it is to get up off of a chair the longer I sit. And it's almost like the longer you sit, the older you are, the, the different moves you make. So if you're sitting for a long time in a deep chair and you get up, you're like, ah, 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 it's, it just takes time. So it's, it's almost like we, <laughs> I don't know why it is, but we lock up. Our bodies lock up. Like when we're teenagers, we roll out of bed, pop up, and just run. And when we see that happening with teenagers, like, oh, yeah, I used to do that when I was a kid, too. Come over here. Let me give you a little thing. But as we get older, we, we can't do that anymore. We've tried, and we injure ourselves. It would be great if we could just get a renewed body. Well, the same thing happens spiritually. When our spirits aren't renewed, our spirit is trying to get up every day. It's like, ah, 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 ah. Ah, and like we got to stretch out our spirit. Why? Because it's been locked down. It hasn't been renewed with the Lord. We just carry on from one day to the next. All the different spirits that we take on, spirit of anger, spirit of frustration, spirit of jealousy. We have all these fears that come on. And so when our spirit is, is just compounded with all of these different things, it locks us down spiritually, and we have a hard time walking daily spiritually. And so when we're out shopping or wherever we may be, our spirit is just not fresh. And people recognize that. The people closest to us recognize that. That's why when Jesus comes in, he renews us. That's why we need to be renewed daily from moment to moment. Not just when we come to church, but it's daily. Because if we only come to church and our spirits are sedentary, sedentary or, or not moving throughout the week, then we're six days locked down. And then when we come to church, no wonder when we walk through, we say, ah, 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 oh, I need, to, I need to worship God. And we think that it's just one day out of the week, our spirits are going to be like, yes, I needed that. Oh, we may need that for the moment and maybe the day to connect with God, but what about the rest of the week? Imagine if you only ate once a week food, once a week. Yeah, right now you're stressing out. It's like, well, food only once a week. What if, I, what if you only had one meal a day? See, even that is stressful. One meal a day, oh, brother, you're pushing it. Some of us only eat one meal a day. But think about our life if we only ate once a week. That's why we talk about doing daily devotions. That's why we have our resource center. We have, we have journals. We have Bibles that you can learn how to journal. You can feed yourself daily spiritually. We have a system that we use it's called SOAP, S-O-A-P, developed by Pastor Wayne Cordero. It's very simple. You read a scripture, you write it down, or whatever scripture stands out to you. Then you write observation, what you observed in that scripture. Then you write down your application. How are you going to apply it into your life? And then you put down a short prayer. And it's a systematic way for us to have fresh bread daily from God. And what it does is it just renews us because it's all about Jesus Christ. And Jesus himself showed the value of receiving fresh revelation from God when he fasted for 40 days and then went into the wilderness, being led by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil. It's found in Matthew chapter 4, but verses 3 and 4 we're going to highlight. It says this, Now when the tempter came to him, which is the devil, the tempter said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Now, the reason why the devil said that is because Jesus was hungry. So what the devil tried to offer him was a temporary fix. But what Jesus knew was he, did, he wasn't in there for the temporary fix. What Jesus was doing was he was developing that spirit connection with his father. And it continues, but then Jesus answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, why would Jesus say that every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God? And it, it's not about bread alone. But what Jesus was doing is he was separating the two. He was letting the enemy know, and us, that you can try to 
bring in what is of the world for your physical fulfillment. But you're going to lack more spiritual fulfillment, not just bread. Because if we think the physical life needs to be fulfilled and we neglect the spiritual life, Suffering spiritually is worse than suffering physically. Because there's a deep-rooted thing in our soul that God reserved for himself. And unless connected with God, we will always feel empty even though full of the world. God needs to be there. So what do we do? Isaiah 40, verse 30 and 31 tells us that even youths will grow tired and weary. Even though they jump out of bed and start running, they still will grow tired. And young men will stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord, what will happen? They will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Here it is. If you're, if you're like me and you have a hard time when you're getting up from the chair and it's like, ah, 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 ah. It's okay. It's okay physically. Because if you're this spiritually, rejoice because you're being renewed by the Spirit of God. Even though our bodies are ah, 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 but our spirits are, hey, I'm soaring on wings like eagles. That is far more valuable than being renewed physically. There's a spiritual thing that takes place. That's where the joy of the Lord comes in. That's why in Psalm 51 verse 10 says to create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. See, God has the capability to renew us. We just need to come to him for fresh bread. Jesus renews our life every single day. Here's the second thing. Life in Jesus refreshes me. That refreshing, so good. Have you ever worked hard all day and you're dirty, you're tired, and then you take a shower? Isn't it refreshing? Heidi calls it washing off, like when we travel, she calls it washing off the airport. That's what she says. She goes, I need to shower, I need to wash off the airport. Or we just say, oh, we got to wash off the traveling. It's just as you travel, you go from place to place, you're on the airplane for 10 hours or 5 hours, whatever it is, you're coming in contact with people, maybe it's hot, you're sweaty, you come home or wherever you're going to be in the hotel, you just want to be fresh. And after you take a shower, you feel so much better. You're refreshed. Doesn't it seem weird for those of you who like to be fresh to see someone just fall asleep when they have not taken a shower? I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's just different, right? Like you're, you're dead tired, but you make sure you take a shower. For some people, they can work hard all day in the yard, come home, change their shirt, and say, I'm going to sleep, and you're like... Um, can you sleep in the living room, please? Can you use a different pillow and a different blanket? Can you get out of my bed? There's a difference when you're fresh. And that's what God does with our spirit. It's like when we're in his presence, when we come to church together like this, and we worship in the way we do, we sing songs to him. There's a renewal. There's a freshness that takes place because fresh is better. There's so much to think about in this next season to a point where you feel like there's no, there's no room for mistakes. It's like you have all of this smudge on you. It's like you have airport on you. You have traveling on you. And you have just so much on you that you're, th you're thinking, how am I going to be refreshed because I'm carrying so much? Well, that's when we come to Jesus because he refreshes our soul. When people would come to God to worship him, they would bake that fresh bread every day in worship to him in the temple, and they would bring the show bread, and they would put it on the table in the presence of God, or they called it the, the uh, bread of the presence, and they would bring that bread because it was fresh bread, made fresh daily. And when you smell fresh bread, it changes the atmosphere. It really does. When there's a freshness about it, it changes the atmosphere. Have you ever been in the movies, and then in the movies, you smell McDonald's fries in the movies, which means someone snuck in McDonald's fries. First of all, I want to go to them and say, you're not supposed to sneak in food. Secondly, I'm like, if you, don't, if you give me some, then I'm not going to, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But it's that aroma, right? There's an aroma about fresh. 
And when God gives us his spirit, that freshness, there's a fresh aroma. There's just, things change in our lives because of his presence. That's why the bread was called the bread of the presence. It's in the presence of God. And they did that at all times. Let's look at Exodus chapter 25, verse 30. The instruction was, put the bread of the presence on this table to be before me. How often? At all times. See, if our relationship with the Lord is only on Sundays or Wednesday nights, then we don't have that fresh bread. And if we only wait week to week to connect with God, instead of at all times, then the freshness doesn't carry on from day to day. That's why I love it when the disciples asked Jesus, teach us to pray. Notice that when Jesus taught them to pray, he started off with our Father. What Jesus didn't say, because I think this is where many of us have a hard time with prayer, is we come to God saying, God, I'm so sorry for all of the things I've done wrong. That's what we say. We're like, God, forgive me for this, this, and this. For if you look at the Lord's Prayer, it, forgiveness doesn't come in until later on. But what does come early on is our Father who art which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's like the, the Lord is saying, when you pray, start off with the victory side. Start off with who God is, not with what you're going through. Why? Because God, God's concern is who you're becoming in him, not the past mistakes, not your past sins. God is not even concerned about your sin today. He's concerned about where you're heading for tomorrow. Oh, he can resolve the sin. He can take care of the sin. But what is even more difficult is when our hearts are not connected with God. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, pray in this way. And then in the prayer, he said in Matthew 6, 11, give us when? Today, our daily bread. Because Jesus knew that we would need his spirit from day to day. He could have said, pray to God and say, give us today our weekly bread. Just give us enough bread for the week. No, he said, give us today our daily bread. See, we, we come to Jesus not only when life is tough. Did you know that you can come to Jesus daily or from moment to moment? Which is why we call it daily devotions. We devote ourselves to the Lord daily. And he gives us that freshness about his spirit. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 25. Jesus being the one who is from beginning to end, offers us more than just his life. In fact, God says, I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. He's going to refresh us. I don't know about you, but in this season, even right now, every day can become a weary day. Life can drag us down. Life in Jesus renews us. we got to remember that. But life in Jesus also refreshes us. And then the last thing, life in Jesus, here's what is great about it, restores us. He restores us. I love watching shows where they restore something. Like if it's a house that's broken down or a rusted car that, that is, you know, needs repairing or needs to be restored. I love seeing the before and after. But what is even more intriguing than the before and after pictures is, is seeing the the reactions of the owners. Like they'll show the before picture or they'll take you through the, the house and they'll show what is broken down, what is not doing well. This beam is termited out. There's, there are termites in the house. And so they say, okay, this is the before. Here's the drawing of what it should look like after. So the owners are like, wow, that's going to look great. But then comes the reveal. Either the car or the house or whatever they're restoring. And then they, they do the mysterious, you know, they, they put something to block it or they blindfold them or something. And then they say, okay, are you ready for your new home? And they say, yes, I'm so ready. I'm so ready for my new home. And then they open up the gates. And then they say, here's your new home. And, and they don't show the home. They show us the reaction of the people. And the people are like, oh, my goodness, it doesn't even look like my home. And they're so thankful. Why? Because it's been restored. The old is gone, the new has come in, and they're so happy. And the guy plays it cool. The guy's like, oh, honey, I'm so glad you like it. But on the inside, the guy's like, yeah, I got, I got an old, my own tool shed. I got an own place. I got my own den. I got my man cave. But they're just playing it cool. It's like, oh, this is, this is beautiful. And then when they walk in the house, the guy's like playing it cool. He's like, oh, I'm going to love this room. No, on the inside, you're screaming for joy. 
the lady just shows what's happening. The guy is just trying to suppress all the emotions because he still needs to look tough. Now, both are thankful. Why? Because that which was broken down is now restored. It's brand new. What God does is he brings in a before. And this is daily. Because daily, every single day, life tears us down. We come to God broken. And God says, just, just watch what I'm going to do. Here's where you are today. And if you want to see the after, look at my son, Jesus Christ. This is who you're going to become like. And when you're restored by Jesus, restored by the Spirit of God, that's why we tear up. That's why we go through emotions. That's why when we come into church sometimes, we're just, we're crying. Or when God touches our heart, we're crying. Why? Because on the inside, we're saying, God, thank you for restoration. Thank you for restoring me, renewing me, refreshing me. I remember one time my friends came to church and the, the friend that was there with her was sitting down and she was just clapping, you know, worshiping God during worship time. She's clapping and she sees her friend and her friend is just... <laughs> and crying. And the friend is looking at her, well, what's, what's the matter? She's, I don't know, I just, I'm just crying. I don't, I don't know what's going on. And she's like, it's okay. Let it out. <laughs> so... <laughs> And she did, <laughs> and she's just crying. But what she was sensing was the Spirit of God touching her heart, and she was restored. Came in broken, touched by God, and was restored. God offers that every single day to be restored. He's not just a Sunday God. He's an everyday God. And he renews us. Matthew chapter 20, excuse me, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Jesus says it simply, come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. In other words, he's saying, link up with me. It's very light. Even my burdens. Very light. It's easy to yoke up with me. Very easy. You don't have to go through hoops and, and change and do all of these things first. You just connect with me. And for many of us, we're just going from one thing to the next without restoring our soul. We're trying our best to take care of the home, the children, the bills, things at work working two or three jobs, we're, we're taking on new things, we're taking care of mom or dad, we're taking care of family members, we're trying to make tough decisions, all while trying to be a better person. It's like our life is the broken down home or the rusted car, and Jesus needs to come in and do some demolition and some deep cleaning. But that's his promise to us. Here's what he says in his word, Jeremiah 30, verse 17. Here's his promise. He says, for I will, not might, I will restore health to you and heal your wounds, says the Lord. And that word to restore means to carry you. In other words, he's going to carry us through the most difficult times. 1 Peter 5.10 tells us that in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have, now this part almost seems like bad news. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore you support and strengthen you and he will place you on a firm foundation yet it almost seems like wait a minute did the, did the bible just say after you have suffered for a while yes it did say that why did it say that because the bible is very honest even believers will suffer we live in a world full of sin we will suffer but he says you're going to suffer for a little while after that you're, i will restore you support you strengthen you we will all suffer in this world. But you and I determine how we're going to suffer. The Bible tells us you can suffer according to the will of God. Which means you're pushing, you're persevering towards God, not away from Him. This holiday season, let Him renew you, refresh you, restore you. Hunger and thirst, no more. 
That's only when we come to Jesus. But blessed are you when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, for then you shall be filled. Amen. And close your Bibles, put away your notes. We're going to pray. And let the Lord do what he's going to do. And let him in. Let him kind of show you what life can be like. I'm going to ask Glenn to come to the keyboard. And as we close in prayer, just make some points here today. Some points of, Lord, this is what you're showing me today. This is what you're teaching me. So can you restore me, renew me, refresh me, and help me to do that daily? Because God can do that wherever you may be. God can restore you daily. So let's pray together. Lord, thank you. Thank you for being the fresh bread. Thank you for restoring us. Thank you for renewing us. Thank you for giving us fresh revelation, vision for our life. Lord, it doesn't matter what age we're at because what never changes is who you are. So today, Lord, we decide that fresh is better and it's your spirit that brings in that freshness. Lord, I pray for anyone here today. Maybe you're here and you're saying, I've never said yes to Jesus, so I don't know about this renewed life, this fresh life and, and being restored. I don't know what that is. And if you're here and you're saying, I, I want Jesus to come into my life, I want to say a prayer with you. If you just lift a hand real briefly and all you're going to say is, I, I want Jesus in my heart. Go ahead, just lift the hand, be bold. And say, Lord, I want this. Okay, God sees your hand. Yeah, God bless you. Anybody else? You're saying, I want Jesus in my life. Okay, God sees you too, right there. Okay, anybody else? Okay, back there. Yeah, he's touching your heart. He's going to give you a fresh vision for your life. You can put your hands down. We can all pray this prayer together, but especially those who are saying yes to Jesus for the first time. Let his spirit in. And here's our prayer. Repeat after me. Just include your heart. And here's our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross and rising from the grave to give me a future and a hope. Give me fresh bread today. Your spirit your life, fresh revelation, and make me into the person that you see me to be. I pray this in your precious name, Lord. And Lord, that's our prayer today. We thank you for bringing us fresh revelation, fresh spirit, a freshness that comes from you because fresh is so much better. Thank you for letting us Renew our lives with you every single day. We pray this in Jesus' name, and we all said together, amen. Can we welcome these that said yes to Jesus for the first time?